Hey guys, still here. Welcome back to From the Depths. In today's episode, I'm going to be building a second craft. Why a second craft? Well, I need a craft that's capable of getting to things that have been destroyed quickly, pick them up, and bring them back. It's not going to be a terribly well-armed craft, it's just going to be a craft that's capable of assisting me. So, let's head into build mode. I already did a bit of the prep work in the sense that I have set up a uh, small section for uh, tractor beams. And with those in place, I'll be able to keep this thing close slash docked if and when I need to. So that's the new craft. Uh, let's go into the tractor beam. Yeah, they were here. Tractor beam. Selection, new vehicle, whole distance. I don't know, 33 meters. Come here. Whoa, where are you going? Where the hell are you going? I think the tractor beam emitter is currently dr bringing it into a position where it should go. Yeah, that's more like it. Now, I can build one of the pre-existing hulls on top of it. An alloy hull. Uh, that's a pretty sizable craft already. Not bad. So if I were to just attach this, does that work? I've got to make sure it looks towards the front. Click. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know that you want to make your acquaintance, but this is not entirely the right way to go about that. Because it's a bit too happy to see me. Anyway, I can perfectly use that hull. What sort of propulsion do you have? If any. Oh, that's kind of the problem. You don't have any. Uh-huh. Okay. That's important. We need some way to drive this thing. I'm not going to go with the steam engine for this one. Because the steam engines, as we have seen, are fairly expensive to operate. And sure, they do work, and they work rather well, but they are also very expensive to run. So it's going to be a couple of RTGs, tandemed with a couple of batteries, and then a couple of electric motors, or electric uh, engines. That way. There you go. What do you mean, not connected? You guys are connected. Stop complaining. Um, propulsion. We should be able to have a few of these blocks here removed. The mass is quite low. The center of mass. So if I remove a few of these blocks. And just ensure that we have some of the blocks overlapping. Then I can put some propellers down there. I just want to make sure that my batteries aren't... Yeah, there we go. That the batteries aren't the lowest point in the ship and thus the most exposed point because I'm not sure if they count as a watertight compartment. Now this is going to be an AI driven craft which means I'll not have command over it. The AI will. Um, I'm not terribly happy about trusting the AI with well it's potentially an expensive craft but at this point, I don't really feel like micromanaging this thing all by myself either. So what I'm going to do is just let the AI handle it. And if it gets destroyed, it gets destroyed. Or as they say, I believe, if he dies, he dies. Now, we're going to need a rudder. Um, yeah, this would be a decent place for it. Water. Rudder. I don't think I can put them here because they'll probably be too close to the prop. Right? Or not? No, they might be fine. Okay, great. Can I even move them closer? Yeah, seems fine. Alright, so we have our rudders. Now the most important thing for these is their way to store cargo. And in order to do that, I'm going to give them two large cargo containers. That's going to bring in about 54,000 per. So that's a total of more than 100,000 resources. 
I doubt that they're going to be able to get that much, but you never know. And uh, the rest of it, well, I can do with this thing whatever I want, which is ideal. Because I could turn it into a small gun platform, I could turn it into a system that works with missiles. Uh, it's basically up to me. What sort of thing is that? Is that alloy? What are you using? Yeah, it's alloy. It's an alloy hull. That does make it really light and fast. Yeah, fine, we'll go with that. I'm going to desecrate the hull here a little bit. This seems to be a slope. And then two, what, two twos? A two and a one? That seems to be it. Now this thing looks nice, but is absolutely useless. Set up a few two meter beams here. And uh, maybe we can get away with a three. Whoops. A three and a two and another two. Right. Should I put a superstructure on this thing, yes or no? Before we get to that, let's first ensure that they have a watertight compartment. And, important, an AI. Because this thing is going to be driven by an AI. Now, before you guys go, uh, hey, you can just look at something and press F. Uh, not in adventure mode, unfortunately. In adventure mode, stuff like that does not work. So every beam you have to build yourself. Every block you have to do yourself. Whoops. Blocks. Uh, lightweight alloy. Two meters. No, it's a three. One three there. And a three here. I'm going to take that deck and extend it outwards. Or backwards. Oh, that's perfect. See, I can... Oh! My bad. Never mind. Ignore last. Uh, F does work in adventure mode. That's nice. That's really nice. Anyway, um, let's head below decks and set up the AI. It's going to be a mainframe. Mainframe is going to sit fairly low in the boat. And again, if this thing dies, I really won't lose any sleep over it. Let's go with a bunch of connectors. We're going to go with some general processing cars. But this thing is going to be a bit more intricate than the AI that I have on the Glorious. Because this thing will also need to drive. So this thing is going to be in control of the boat. And for that, we're going to go with behaviors and additional routines. And that is going to add extra behavior. No, hold on. Plug and play cards. Uh, congratulations, you're now a ship. How do I tell it that it's a ship? Cards. Enemy simulator? No. Aim point, target prio. What do you need for that? Circling hovercraft, circling, circling ship. I don't want you to circle. I just want you to be able to move. Hmm. What am I missing? Target prio, aim point. I don't need to do that in mirror mode, by the way. Target prio here. Can I already give that thing orders? You can only give a force orders when the AI is in patrol fleet mode. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, creator, cargo. Creators will fill your cargo storage. Okay. Edit, maneuver. No, at naval. Drive into range broadside the enemy. I don't think so. That's not your job. I just have the AI set up wrong. Retrofit, utility, dock it, undock it. Oh god, how did this used to work? 
Designated as an air vehicle? No, you're not an air vehicle. You're a land vehicle. Or you're a naval unit. I'm sorry, guys. It has been forever since I have used this thing as such. Let me take a moment to figure this out. A little while later, I have found it. I just needed to undock it and then turn the AI mainframe into fleet move mode. This way, it's going to move with the rest of the fleet. Provided, of course, that it's not docked to the ship. Now, time to go back to building on this particular unit. Um, we have the AI. There we go. They're not going to move just yet. I do want to have this thing docked to my craft, unless otherwise directed. It does need detectors. Uh, let's start with a sonar detection. So it's going to be a uh, connector. Let's use one of the blocks here. And then, hold on, what's above that? Oh. <laughs> Unintentionally, I plugged or I opened a hole in the hull and it just so happened to be next to the AI. So this thing is immediately connected. Perfect. Metal, no, it was lightweight alloy, beam, here. So now it has sonar. Now we're going to need to give it some more detectors. So it's going to be AI, connectors. Uh, those portholes do look nice, but unfortunately for the AI, or for that craft, they don't really serve a function. You're going to have um, a couple of 90 degree radars on there. Yeah, you're not connected, correct. I also want this to be a connector block. And that is going to be attached to a radar. Actually, no. Screw that. No, we're not doing that. Um, I'm going to go with an actual detection mast on this thing. The real question is what weapon systems? If any, let's say missile systems, because I think they're the easiest ones to use. At least for something like this. Medium missiles, a few launchers at the bow, allow to have torpedo tubes. And then for uh, aerial targets, we're going to give it some form of anti-air system. And this way, if worst comes to worst, this thing can also uh, kill its own targets. Now, medium hatched gantry. Like that. And then a block, alloy, lightweight alloy. It is entirely possible, and I'll reiterate this, that this thing dies fairly soon. Fairly soon. Because it's not designed for combat, and the difficulty is just going to keep going up. So, if it does die, so be it. At least I had a bit of an experiment with it. Medium hatched gantry over here. Medium gantry over there. And then connect these things. Give it uh, an IFF. Give it a staggered fire add-on. Give it a connector. Sorry, a controller. No launch pads attached. What? What do you mean? I swear there are launch pads attached. There we go. Oh, Jesus, you're a long missile. Holy shit. Okay. Um, variable thruster, no. Torpedo propeller, that is a lot of fins. I'm not opposed to fins, but that's a bit much. Fins. Did I really make it this long? Oh, I guess I did. These are going to be <laughs> some really big torpedoes. Uh, lifetime 40 seconds, sure. Then we're going to go with a prediction guidance. This is very, very deadly, potentially. Could be even worse than my own weapon systems. Because if this is all explosive warhead, that's going to leave a massive explosion. Like how much are we looking at here? Explosive damage, 25,000. 
26,000. Active Radar Seeker. No, let's make that a Torpedo Sonar. And over here, I want a Ballast Tank. We have Thrust. Fuel for Thrust for 183 seconds. Okay. Um, at a speed of 31 meters per second. They are not quick, these things. That's a bit of an issue. I could give the propeller a hell of a boost. Give them um, 91 seconds of thrust. It's still not great range-wise, because this is about 4,000 meters at maximum speed. Turning rate is problematic. Let's give it some more fins on the bow. So that's going to have a higher turning rate in the water. And maybe one more... Uh, what do they call that regulator? 80 second lifetime. It still has too much thrust for what I'm doing with it. So let's move up the prediction guy. Oh, there's another fuel tank here. Um, this one is going to be the regulator then. And you're going to be another explosive warhead. Lifetime 80 seconds, thrust 75 seconds. So thrust reduce it a bit. Let's say a maximum of 80 seconds, which means that, uh, oh, they only have a maximum speed of 38. Yikes. 38 times 80 means 3000 meters. No. No, no, no. We're going to redo this missile. It's way too big. Could I mount a huge missile launcher? I might be able to, but it is a hell of an investment for what I'm currently working with. But I could have some fun with large launchers, I suppose. Okay. So let's remove this thing. As it happens, these are a bit too big for what I have in mind. And then instead, uh, we're going to remove these beams as well. Add large missiles, 2 meter hatch. Oh crap. Remove the wrong beams. It has to be these ones. The missile sits over there. Then comes the large gantry. Six slots. And then add a connector to it. And add a controller. Not over there, over here. Alright, how long are you? Not very. Speed? 216 meters per second. Yeah, but not with a torpedo propeller, you're not. Torpedo sonar. Two fuel tanks is a bit much. Let's go with one fuel tank instead. And the other one is going to be a prediction guidance. So this gives me 62 seconds over a lifetime of 80 seconds. And now we're at a better speed, at a better range. Because now we're looking at 74 meters per second at 62 seconds, that's four and a half kilometer range. That's still actually a lot relative to what I need. But if I want to speed these things up, I think it's not necessarily going to be better. Because now they only get a range of 3000 meters. So let's set these things back to 10,000 uh, thrust. Let's ramp up slowly in uh, three seconds. Copy. Let's ensure that they have an IFF. And on top of that, that they don't launch all at once. Staggered fire right on. And then I gotta close this hole back up because this is now a gaping hole. Using alloys or metals? Yeah, alloy. Okay. And then we can just cover up this bow. Uh, those are three meter beams. And then I think fours? Yeah, that looks like four. Four. 
Make sure it has control or give control to the AI. Local weapon controller. That's what you're controlling. Uh, you are in command of it. You can engage targets out to, let's say, 3,800 meter range. But they cannot be flying. That's rather important. Altitude, I'm going to say a maximum of 5 meters. This way they will not target any aerial units. It's not connected. Correct. Because the AI down deck... And below deck does not have a transmitter yet. There, now it does. Um, that is the missile controller. This whole thing is outdated. Can just get rid of that. Okay, what else do we need? We need a detection mast. We need to have potentially a sea whiz or small flak gun on it. Something that's going to defend it. So let's first start with superstructure, which I will build out of metal. I really hope it's not going to be too heavy, though. That's something that I really need to keep an eye on, because then this thing is just going to tip over. Okay, if I ensure that this is another 3 meter here, and a 4 there, then I should be able to just fill this part up. Ta-da. Okay. Now, a superstructure. A superstructure that's going to be utterly redundant, <laughs> in a way. Simply because it's, uh, it's there to shoot at. But that's really the only useful thing for it. That's the only thing that it's going to be good for. And to make it look okay, I guess. Oh, and also detection. That's another factor. Make sure I have a detection mast of some sort. So switch to a three, add an inverted three. I hope it's not gonna tip the ship over too much. If it does, then I'll just add more stuff to the keel. Uh, AI connector. And then make sure that that thing can receive orders. From down here. Come on. There. Ensure that that is a bit of a mast like that. It probably already has a better looking mast than the one that I'm currently using. AI. Detection components. I want to have a 360 degree radar on top of it. Then on the sides, I would like to have radar tracker gimbals. Like that, so I can detect targets. I want to have camera gimbals. Or sorry, no, uh, ray, which was it, laser tracker? Is that connected? Check. It's not tracking anything. Excellent. Um... Hold on, no, they're not positioned correctly. That's better. And then I could have a camera on front of it, I suppose. Not sure if it's going to be 100% required, but I might as well. So just a 180-degree uh, camera, which I think is going to be a 360 anyway. So one over there. And I can have one over there. That's going to be connected like that. All right, armor that thing up. Sort of. Uh, let's give it another three meter beam here. It's going to be a triangle corner. Now this thing does sit really high. You know what? I'm going to move the whole thing. I was going to say it sits really, really high. And because of that, might make a supreme target. Whereas if I just put everything that I need... A little bit above the tower, not that high. I hope that it's not going to draw as much attention either. So, once again, um, camera. I know it's not going to be capable of looking backwards, so be it. Radar. AI con uh, connectors. They're going to sit here. We're going to have the semi-detecting, or the, sorry, the, the, the gimbal radar trackers over there. And then, 
What else would I need? Considering that I'm using mostly missiles on this thing. I think I'm not going to need that much. I do need an inter-vehicle transmitter. It sends detection information to other vehicles. So that if this thing detects something, that the Glorious can engage it. Okay, let's finish this thing up. Three meter slopes. Uh, I guess that's good enough. The rest of that stuff is mostly mostly redundant. Four meter beam underneath it. Triangle corner. Okay, you know what? I'll make it a bit longer. Just a bit. Because it looks better. Whoops. Blocks. Metal. And then... Um, slopes. I could put a missile launcher in here. That way I would also have my anti-air battery. It is, however, fairly susceptible because it is quite high in the water. If I put it... Yeah, I'm going to put the missile launcher below there. Because it's a bit safer. So let's finish this thing off. I know I keep saying that, but <laughs> here we go. This part. Another four. And then a three on top of that. A inverted beam there, another three here, and a three meter slope. Uh, yep, you don't have connection, you're right. Receiver. Over there. Now you have a connection. In case it gets blown off, I'm going to add a few more. And then for the rest of it, well, I can just close it up, I guess. I don't really need much more than that. Come on. Is that one more block? One more block. Very well. Okay, so we have the ability to engage surface threats using the torpedoes. Uh, the large torpedoes at that. And then we need to be able to engage aerial threats. And to make sure that can happen, I'm going to use the space uh, more or less behind here. And ensure that I can engage surface threats. I'm going to have the battery all the way over here before I forget to replace those. Electric engine. Move the RTGs over here. That means I can take them away from here. That means that all of this deck space <coughs> is now game. Oh, hold on a moment. You're not supposed to move out just yet. Turning off. Thank you. Well, we, at least we know the propulsion works. Uh, what I don't yet have over here is a water pump. Or an air pump. So right now it's probably cons going to consider that this thing is flooded. There we go. Now you're not. Okay. Ensure that I have a bulkhead. If this thing almost inevitably will take damage, I want to make sure that it's okay. Ah, crap. Uh, build on this. Mirror mode on. Three meter beam. It's one compartment. And make sure that all of those compartments have their own air pump. So you have an air pump, check. Uh, congratulations, you now have an air pump. And you now have an air pump. And that's the back of the ship. This thing is also going to get an air pump. And we're going to finish that off with a couple of metal beams. Like that. Okay, so I have the space back here for a vertical launch battery. And that is going to be 
mostly small missiles dedicated to dealing with aerial threats. So, missile launchers, small missiles, um, hatched gantry, sure. We're going to be firing a lot of those things, as you might have gathered. At this point, it is still going to be a fairly expensive craft, considering all the resources that I'm pouring into it. I'm already at 152. I think I started at 180. So as it happens, it's <laughs> turning into a fairly expensive craft. But hey, I'm having fun with it, and that is the objective of the game. Give me connectors. Uh, that air pump's going to have to get sacrificed for a second. Give me a controller for it. Give me an IFF. Give me a staggered fire add-on. Staggered fire add-on, 0.2 seconds. Before I forget it, I also have to do that in the bow. Here. Because this thing does have a staggered fire add-on over there. But it's currently set to 0.1. I want to have that on, let's say, one second. Feels fairly long, but I really don't want to waste too many missiles or too many torpedoes like that. Okay, um, close this part back up. That, however, should be alloy. Lightweight alloy. Is that a four meter? That'd be great. Yes, it's a four. Excellent. Let me guess, you're not connected? You're not connected. That's because these missile connectors don't extend out far enough. Here, 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 here. Okay. Um, aerial target. Active radar seeker? Maybe. Although I could go for a different approach and use a laser emitter. It's used for beam rider missiles and laser target designator missiles. So that when the AI finds something, I can have the laser designator just light it up. And with that system in place, I might be able to engage targets a bit more accurately. The question is, where do I put that? Because I don't really want to mess with my detection structure too much. Uh... I don't want to put them over here because I think they might be too weak, too fragile. So where would I put them? Although they do have a nice amount of clearance here. How about here on the sides of the bridge? So we're going to have one there, one here. And sort of have those things supported, I guess. Unfortunately, I might not be able to place one here, at least not in the current format. And here, missiles, laser emitter. Not connected to missile controller. Oh crap, do those things need to be on a connector and AI? Or not? I hope not. Where's the missile launcher? Here. Uh, you. Laser designator. Laser designator receivers will aim at the point whatever the laser blah, whatever the missile laser block is pointing at. Copy to all. But I'm afraid that I need to have these things directly connected to the missile system. Crap. Controlling missiles from its own connector. No, actually, you shouldn't be. From its own controller. Uh, no. You should do that throughout the rest of the system. On Google search later, I found out that it's really simple. I just needed to use these things. Missile receivers and missile wireless transmitters. Transmitter goes on the main connector, on the main controller system... The receivers do the rest of the work. So this system now got a small bit of extra parts, 
but it shouldn't really be that much of an issue. Now, as for the missiles themselves, they are targeting aerial units, which makes aerial maneuverability important. So I'm going to put another fin on the front. And let's see, it gives me a turn rate of 77 meters per second, or sorry, 77 degrees per second, as opposed to uh, 56. I might add another one, because I really don't need this many fuel tanks. That seems a bit excessive. The amount of fuel time that I now have is 75 seconds for a missile that has a lifetime of a mere 10. So first we're going to add a regulator, which adds 10 seconds to the lifetime. Uh, and then we're going to start sacrificing fuel tanks. As I'm looking for aerial hits, I'm going to go with frag warheads. And thrusteration is 25 seconds. This means that for 25 seconds, I'll do about 124 meters per second. So that's a range of three kilometers. I'd say that's good enough. They can turn pretty damn quick. They have a decent amount of fuel. They have some frag heads. Uh, they have a regulator. Let's do it. Frag cone. I'm going to set that to a mere 20 degrees. Unfortunately, you have to do that for... Oh, sorry. No. Can you do that for all of them? If only. No, you need to do that per frag head. You'd think that they would make this a bit more efficient, but no joy. Copy to all matching launch pads, done. Now, give that thing over to the AI. So, local weapon controller. Congratulations, you have just been given command of this weapon system. Don't use it to target at a range beyond, I'm going to say 2,800 meters. 2,800 meters. I said 2,800 meters. Thank you. Um, altitude. Don't try and target submarines. So let's say it has to be at least 2 meters above surface. And 2,000 meters seems a bit high. The rest of it seems fine. Um, you'd not connected yet. You'd be correct. Now you are. You just don't know it yet. And the staggered fire. Uh, 0.2 seconds. I have... That is 8, 16. Ooh. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of missiles that are going to be targeting aerial unit. In that case, maybe, maybe a bit more. Let's give it a half a second. There. All right, and to top it off, let's make this thing have that sleeker, no, not heavy armor, uh, that sleeker look by giving it this thing here in the back. Again, it's going to be completely unmanned, completely AI controlled. Just a ship that is, well, it started out, <laughs> started out as a craft that's going to collect stuff for me. Uh, whether it's going to do just that <laughs> remains to be seen. Because it might as well be a complete warship at this point. Do we have a threat? What's that out there? Here, you can go and collect that. Uh, give me standard speed. Turning Disable off. movement. No, you're good to go. Up and fly with you. Moving go out. over there. And there she goes. Oh, damn. You do like your roll. A lot. A whole lot. Maybe I need to look into the AI. All right, a little while later, I think I fixed it. Um, unfortunately, the game managed to get some of the roughest ways for this new craft of mine. But hey, she's moving and she's going pretty quick. Capable of doing 27 meters per second. And uh, with that, not losing any power. Well, she's losing a bit of power, but not that much. She's going to pick up some of the enemy salvage over here, come back, and we should be able to be friends and dock. Although there, oh, there's even more out there. Um, aside from that, there is one inbound target in the form of the the frantic chicken. Is that an actual name? Okay. Over there. There's two things out there. Hello. Frantic chicken KIA. Ooh. 
Was that another chicken? I'm not sure. Oh, Jesus, there's 35k over there. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Um, how much do you have, supply-wise? 6,200. Yeah, I still have to pick it up. Anyway, with that, I'm going to end the episode because I have my little slave craft. I mean, my assistant. And my assistant is perfectly happy to go out, pick up supplies, and come back as needed. I think I might need to do a little bit of work on the stability of this craft because right now... Eh. <laughs> She's all over the place. If you have some suggestions on how to tweak the AI on this, by all means, let me know. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe and I'll see you soon for another episode. What are you doing?